In this video I'd like to talk about ExistDB and RESTXQ. After we create our default Exist application, we're going to leave all the permissions at defaults. First thing we have to do is go into collection.xconf and add the RESTXQ trigger. For the demonstration, we're going to use an HTTP client to register a new user which will register the username and password inside of exist as well as create a user file with the username phone number and whether the phone number is listed or not so let's take a look at the first version of our API XQuery module RESTXQ gives us a couple of annotations that we can mark up a function turning it into a resource function the first one is the rust annotation that takes a verb as well as it could also take the body of the HTTP call which can then be mapped into our methods parameters um, there's also the path of our API resource and the media types that we will call with and return. Let's take a look at our new account function. It is a post. It will take an HTML form and these parameters are going to be mapped into the functions arguments. What we've done is uh, since the new account is an unauthenticated call there needs to be a file and a user created and exist. So what we've done is we've created a user and this username is hard-coded into our application code and is a member of the DBA group so that it can make calls to the security manager as well as writing files to the database each user added to the database will also have their primary group set to RESTXQ demo group and this elevate application basically calls into the XMLDB login function elevating the database here depending on our execution we're going to return various HTTP status codes and custom messages uh, this maps into a REST response element that takes a HTTP status code and we're also going to return a custom header with our message. One thing I want to mention is that you're not limited to returning just a resource. You can also return a custom status code with custom headers. If you decide just to return the resource the HTTP status will default to 200. Here also we have a user module that represents the user resource which is the .user file on the exist database. So let's try to register a user. Here we saw that Chris is already registered. So if we try to register it again, we're going to re receive a 400 bad request with a custom header of user already exists. Let's try to register Bob and have his phone number publicly listed. We get a 200 with a registration successful. Now let's talk about uh, shielding exceptions. Uh, this does not, this version of the API does not shield any exceptions. So if we decide to put in a space in our username, we'll get a 500. And that is because part of this code fails to execute and the entire exception is thrown back to the client 
if for some reason the create account fails then we would return the 500 from within our code but that's not the case here so then another function that I have here is to unlist a phone number or list a phone number this basically calls into our user and changes the phone list status it tries to retrieve the document from the data v1 path where the username is equal to our current DB user and then updates the document as appropriate so let's try to do that so we're going to unlist Chris's phone number and Chris exists as a user so we're going to log in with HTTP authorization header into the database and try to unlist the number well see we're going to get an error that Chris does not have the permission to write to the file which is true the file has been created with default permissions and Chris does not have write access to this file so let's see how we can get around that in version 2 of our API the version 2 of our API is uh, basically the same with the exception of the v2 so in version 2 when we create the user and the user file we're going to do something different instead of just storing the file we're also going to change the group and change the owner on that file let's try to simulate that so here's v2 accounts let's create a new account of Chris M and we got a 200 OK registration successful let's take a look at that file and exist and this file actually is now in data v2 folder so you can see that the owner has been changed and the group has been changed now if you try to unlist the phone number let's see who is actually listed so we see, we can see that there's one user Chris M he has his phone number listed so if we decide to let's change this to Chris M and update the phone number to unlisted we get a 200 OK so if we go back and see which users have their phone numbers listed we'll get a null and basically the call to unlist changed the listed status if we try to list it back again we get a 200 OK and let's try to get the users who have their phone numbers listed and there's Chris again let's talk about authorization so our list and unlist methods they require the HTTP context and the XML DB to be authorized with some kind of exist DB user because the file the user file needs to be written to so if we call into the phone on list function with no credentials we're gonna get a 500 server error with a custom header so this has actually been trapped in our execution um, because it tries to find the guest that user file which does not exist and if it even if it did the guest would not have access to it so if we try bad credentials we'll get a 401 authorization required so if we try a good set of credentials Chris M and password we get a 200 OK that the document has been updated. In the next video, I'd like to talk about API versioning as well as exception shielding, um, different method for user registration, and taking advantage of more JSON. Thanks for watching.